Nerdwork land, Nicole Connor here, and I'm totally excited to share some totally nerdy stuff with you about the endocannabinoid system. You've probably seen some posts, maybe gotten the vibe a little bit about this system that was discovered in our bodies eh, roughly around 1990, and it's pretty amazing. So I'm going to cover some really interesting stuff for you today. Feel free to share this video for those of you who want to know more. Um, if you have questions, I put a little poll up there asking if you want more information or if you'd like to get a product recommendation or just want to know more about the endocannabinoid system, I'd be happy to um, get with you offline and get you some more information and hopefully answer or direct you on where to get some answers about this. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. You know, start a watch party. Let's uh, let's get some information out there. So. Um, an overview of the endocannabinoid system. Um, I found a great website, of, actually several, but this website, and I'll post the link in the comments um, after the video is done so you guys can check out this article and all of the scientific related research that goes along with it. Um, and then I'd love you for you to please answer question in the poll there so I can get back to you. All right, so if you've ever wondered what cannabinoids do and how they interact with your body. Hopefully we'll answer some of your questions here. Um, the endocannabinoid system is responsible for regulating balance in your body's immune response system, your appetite, your metabolism, your memory, and so much more. I've posted a little picture in the comments there as well that hopefully will kind of give you some keys and ideas about what this does for your system. So. In spite of this integral role this system takes on, until recently it remained um, unknown on how it was interacting with your body's uh, normal functions. So the plant, or excuse me, yes, the plant was inspired, excuse me, the name endocannabinoid system was inspired by um, the name of the plant, cannabis, and is called endo, which means within the cannabis system. And it's important role in just becoming uh, understood by the medical community. So like I said, it was discovered in 1990 and has been studied relentlessly since. So there's a lot of scientific research available at the NIH or National, National Institute of Health.gov. Feel free to just let your fingers do the walking on that website and just get an idea of what kind of research has been done on the endocannabinoid system. It's really fascinating. So what does it do? Um, it helps to integrate certain mechanisms in your body, such as enzymes, which are responsible for creating and destroying cannabinoids. It has receptor sites on cells that receive cannabinoids, the CB1 and CB2, and the endocannabinoids themselves, compounds that are naturally produced by the human body or in, ingested um, by phytonutrients. So, Together, those mechanisms are predominantly responsible for regulating your body processes and functions. So endocannabinoids interact with CB1 and CB2 receptor sites, and the goal is helping your body to achieve homeostasis. So that's a lot to say that your body actually makes these already, but a lot of us are experiencing some deficiencies in this system. And I'm going to get to that at the end of this presentation. But in the meantime, drop all your questions um, in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to share and answer the poll question that's being asked uh, if you want more information. So CB1 and CB2 receptors respond respectively in this way. So CBD1 or excuse me, CB1 receptors, most prevalent are in the central nervous system, which all on your spine, so the CNS, right? And is linked to mod modulating stress, anxiety, your appetite, nausea, your immune system, and creating balance in that area. And even the inhibition of certain tumors, which has been studied as well. Now, CB2 receptors are found mostly on cells in the immune system. And they seem to be dominating and fighting inflammation and damage to tissues. Now, some cells even contain both types of receptors and are each responsible for different functions. So it's really, it's pervasive throughout your whole body. Every organ, every cell has this system in it. So phytocannabinoids, which are compounds found in seeds, stalks, and the flowers of cannabis. 
Now the cannabis I'm referring to is hemp cannabis, although there's been many studies on other types of cannabis, a big family of plants, and I'm referring to hemp CBD plants or cannabis plant. It is also interacts with your cannabinoid receptors. So your body doesn't differentiate where it comes from. It doesn't decide, oh, this came from someplace else outside my body. It responds the same way, which is actually very cool. So the most common cannabinoids are found in cannabis, which are THC. And of course, that's a psychoactive compound found prevalent in different types of cannabis, cannabis. Um, which produce a high, and then there's the cannabidinol, or CBD, which is a non-psychoactive compound. While the endocannabinoid system is linked to a number of really important processes, um, it's concentrated in the brain, the nervous system, and reproductive organs. So for those of you watching and you're thinking, hmm, well, I struggle with stress, anxiety, you know, have some inflammation issues, things like that, I want you to start thinking about this system and how it might be correlated with some challenges or chronic conditions you may be experiencing. Now, while the endocannabinoid system is linked to a number of important processes, as I mentioned before, it's concentrated um, in those particular areas. So a little bit of history on the endocannabinoid system. Um, in the early 19th century, the United States extractions of cannabis plant were widely used for a number of medicinal purposes. Um, fearing the abuse of cannabis, we're referring to marijuana, not hemp. Marijuana had its psychoactive properties. The federal government prohibited cannabis in 1937. That prevented this plant from being used recreationally, medicinally, and in research here in the United States, which ended up stalling the progress of our understanding this system and its possible therapeutic properties. So for nearly 50 years, the cannabis was dropped from popular pharmacopoeia and labeled as illicit. Now, since the passing of the Farm Bill, thank the Lord for that, um, hemp has been taken off that list. Yay! Now, in the early 1990s, as I mentioned before, there was a team at the National Institute of Mental Health first identified THC sensitive receptors in the brain of rats. Following this revelation, the National Academy of Science predicted the 1990s would be the decade of the brain. So if you go back and start looking at all the research on the NIH, you're gonna find a tremendous amount of research on animal studies. And then later, uh, over the last 30 years, we've had some great research done on human studies as well. So <clears throat> since then, scientists have labored tremendously to find how our natural system and our natural occurring cannabinoids and the ways cannabis can alter the balance of this system. I'm just getting started, guys. So please, please ask uh, your questions down there um, and check the poll questions there to find out if you want more information about the endocannabinoid system. I'll send you some links and get you out there so you can get some of your questions answered. If you would like a product recommendation, uh, click that box as well, and I will get back to you. Now, that said, um, how does the endocannabinoid system affect your health? The big question of the day, right? You've seen a lot of people posting it and they're maybe making some claims they shouldn't, but I want you to understand how this endocannabinoid system works in your body so that it, you can understand how it can negatively uh, be impacted if it's not working properly. So since the endocannabinoid system and its parts have been discovered, researchers have worked really hard to understand the therapeutic uh, use to decrease pain, fight cancer, even prevent neurogenerative diseases, and promote health. Overall, the research indicates that the endocannabinoid system helps regulate the body's immune system, central nervous system, and ensure that they are running correctly. So one theory about how the endocannabinoid system relates to our overall health is that the ECS is, sorry, called the endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. That's a big, long, fancy word that means that that system isn't working right. And that speculates that for some people, the body does not generate enough endocannabinoids. The concept further speculates that the deficiency could be the root cause of many, get this, many autoimmune diseases or disorders, including migraines, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome, and so many more. So overall, the significant research must still be done to better understand the impact of the endocannabinoid system on our overall health and how supplementing 
our natural endocannabinoid production with plant-based cannabinoids can play a significant, significant therapeutic role in our health. Now, it doesn't say it's going to work. It just says it might help. So let's be really clear that if you're suffering from those conditions that I just mentioned, it may help. And understanding your endocannabinoid system and giving it what it needs may help relieve some of those symptoms. So as we learn more about the endocannabinoid system, we can learn about the potential for compound, compounds like cannabis, THC, CBD, and more to be used therapeutically. Now, finding ways to modulate the endocannabinoid system actively opens pathways to amazingly disparate set of chronic diseases and disorders. And this could include difficult conditions like Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and even cancer. So that's from this article that I just read here. I'm gonna post a link to it. And what I, uh, the reason I shared this is because it actually has scientific articles that follow it. So you can go right to the National Institute of Health and read these scientific research papers yourself if you wanna know more. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and look through some of the questions here, let's see. So let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to share this information. I have a poll question there for you um, about getting more information, not only about product recommendations, but also just to learn a little bit more about the ECS, I'd be happy to send you some more information. Um, thanks, Lori, for posting in there. Nora, Noel, hi. Um, let's see, Melanie, I'm not really sure what your question means. Oh, check, check, and double check. Yes, ma'am, that's right. Um, okay, so tagging some people. Okay, so if any of you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to get back to you. Again, my name is Nicole Connor, and I'm just bringing you, as always, natural health solutions to everyday problems. You take care, everyone, and we'll talk to you all very soon. Bye.